Hear these words from Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Good morning and welcome to St. Giles Kingsway Church. My name is Sheila and I am so pleased to welcome you in person and online to worship with us on this glorious day that God has made. The lovely flowers in the, at the front of the sanctuary are placed by Paul Malcolmson in memory of his mother, Dorothy, who died this time of year, 2013. Following worship today, we will have our congregational lunch in the lower hall. Thanks so much to those who were able to assist by bringing food or helping to set up or clean up. And please know that everyone is welcome to join in. A membership class will begin next Sunday and run for four Sundays after worship. Please speak to Pastor Tim if you would like to attend. We are very pleased to have a guest minister today. Reverend Eric Lee was a student pastor here in 2016 and 2017, and he is now minister at Graceview Presbyterian Church. He and Pastor Tim are doing a pulpit exchange. And Tim says that Eric wanted to do the exchange because he knew we were having lunch. I don't know if Tim told him that Eric is now expected to help clean up as well. Our church will hold a Mardi Gras pancake supper on Tuesday, February 13th at 6 p.m. This will be a great celebration of lots of fatty and sweet foods before Lent begins. It is also a fundraiser for the Guatemala mission trip. At 7 p.m. following dinner, there will be a brief praise service in the sanctuary. We enter the season of Lent the following day, Ash Wednesday, and will hold a service at 7 p.m., as you can see in the bulletin. Now please stand with us for the opening hymn, number 273, Come Thou Almighty King.
Good morning, everyone. I'm Eric, Pastor Eric. Nice to meet you all. I've seen many familiar faces here. So glad to be here today. And thank you for the opportunity to um, yeah, conduct the service once again here. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe, you are great beyond all things. You gave us your son, Jesus Christ, as Savior and Messiah and the Holy Spirit as our helper and comforter. We give you glory, honor, and praise now and forever. Compassionate and merciful God, who sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to deliver us from all forms of injustices and inequalities. We confess we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have looked down on others because of their race, class, and color. Forgive us our wrongs and create in us new hearts and new minds. Grant us enlarged visions to see your image in everyone we encounter, regardless of their background, race, and ethnicity. Help us to love like Jesus and create communities of human flourishing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your everlasting love and compassion. Help us to respond to your call for peace and justice, that we rest in the assurance that you are always with us to nudge us. So now we pray with the words our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We are forgiven in Christ. Let us accept Christ's forgiveness and extend it to others. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Um, very, very happy to be here. I will be brief this morning, but I thought it's worth mentioning, um, as this is Black History Month, uh, we as a choir have a uh, unique opportunity to celebrate um, a few of the many, many uh, rich voices that have contributed to the choral world and the music world. So um, we're very excited to share with you uh, an excellent spiritual uh, about Daniel. Thank you. 
I'd invite the children to come up and join me at the front. Well, good morning. Sometimes when I go for a walk, I pass a life-sized statue of a big dog. It's only a statue. It's carved out of stone, but it's made to look real. Recently, something interesting happened by the statue. And I took a picture of what happened because I wanted to show you. So let's look at the picture. The dog statue is on the left. And on the right side is a real coyote. This coyote is real. It came running down the street and it stopped to look at the statue. Now, what do you think this coyote is thinking as it looks at the statue? What's that guy doing there? What's that guy doing there? Mm hmm. <laughs> Anything else? Um, okay. Is, is this real? Yes, the coyote is real. The oh. statue is not. Oh, is it real? Oh, yes, okay. The coyote is thinking, is this real? Right, is this guy real? I think, yeah, that's a good, that's a good thought. Both of these are good. Any other thoughts? Well, whatever the coyote is thinking, as soon as the coyote realizes that this statue is, it is just a statue, that the, the dog isn't real, the coyote is going to be disappointed. Don't you think? We, about that, this coyote is about to get disappointed. Well, there are lots of things that try and capture our attention. And a lot of these things can look interesting or even exciting at first, but actually they're only going to disappoint us. And some of these things are fake, just like that dog statue is fake and they're not real. And sometimes people ask us to get involved with something that they say is going to be fun or okay to do. And maybe that captures our interest at the moment. But deep down, we know that we shouldn't get involved because it's not right. And it's only going to lead to unhappiness for ourselves and for others. There's a lot of deception in the world. In other words, Sometimes things that look good aren't. And sometimes things that look real are fake, just like this statue of the dog. And so that's why it's important for us to come to church and to Sunday club and to read the Bible and to pray. Because the more we learn about Jesus, the more we know what's true and what's valuable and how to live. And the better we are at being able to discern, or in other words, to be able to tell what's really good for us. And Jesus will give us the strength to stand up against pressures and to be able to say no to what is fake or wrong. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and want the very best for us. Help us to focus each day on what is good and right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we read from the scriptures, let us pray. Prepare our hearts and minds, O oh God, to receive your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, 
that hearing we may obey your will through Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading is Psalm 62, a Psalm of David. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down, this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hopes in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. You reward everyone according to what they have done. Next, we're going to read about Daniel in exile. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So these administrators and satraps went as a group to the king and said, may King Darius live forever. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days, except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Now, your majesty, issue the decree and put it in writing so that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. So King Darius put the decrees in writing. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish it? a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, remember, your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, no decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. 
So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hello again. I'm so proud, so honored to be invited back to this familiar pulpit today. As you know, Pastor Tim has been leading an annual Bible series here based on the story. In light of the following this series uh, on his behalf, today we are on to um, chapter 18 about Daniel in exile. Let's take a closer look at the story of Daniel in the den of lions. As recorded in Daniel chapter 6, that's one of the most beloved in all scripture. First of all, Daniel's being safe all overnight in the lion's den has probably risen more than a few eyebrows among our generation of people. We heard of the story. We know it was God's miracle. As much as we admire the unwavering courage and faithfulness that Daniel had testified, our logical minds tell us that it would be insane for us to follow suit. Courageous people in our days are often ridiculed as idiots. Deep down in our heart, we no longer believe miracles like that would ever happen to us. In fact, the West, Canada, often has trouble dealing with supernatural forces. People are so used to believing that everything has a natural cause to it. Everything would have a scientific explanation to it. The pandemic just reinforced all that with the big slogan, let's believe in science. Most would assume biblical stories like Daniel with the lions are just fairy tales, which all seem to be hardly relevant to our own life circumstances today. Are we too naive to take Daniel's miracle seriously? Conversely, are we too narrowly, culturally, too narrowed, not too? Daniel, as exemplified in this Lions episode, shines for his courage in the midst of danger and adversity. Well, how do, what does it take to be Daniel. Would you consider yourself a courageous person or a timid person? Well, some of you know me here. Friends of mine often say I am a person who is not afraid to speak up. <laughs> I am flattered, actually, when, when they say it takes a lot of courage for me to give up all the status quo and to just move to a foreign land of Canada without knowing anybody. In my ordination service last year, Pastor Tim gave a sermon there. Let me just share a little bit of what he described to me in, in that sermon. Eric is forthright, but he's not a people pleaser. He is genuine and sincere, yet sometimes people could get uncomfortable or even offended by his daring honesty. Sweet isn't quite a word to associate with Eric. Rather, he is salty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm nothing compared to Daniel. Now and then, some words that I speak and actions that I take may be considered as courageous 
in the eyes of others. I believe that Christian faith will and sh should shape our values and actions. Outward courage could well be a sign of inward faith, a product of inward faith. However, in really difficult and challenging times, I admit that I would almost definitely revert to self-preservation mode. My natural tendency is to assess if the sacrifice is worth taking or not, or in financial terms to assess risk adjusted return. Over and over again, I would choose to play smart rather than do right. Precisely, it is all down to personal choices. So why don't we go back to the Daniel story and see if we can pick out the choices Daniel made to be courageous about life, despite challenges deliberately placed in his path by enemies. Number one, Daniel chose character over comfort. To do the most with the situations he, has, he was handed rather than complain about the ones he wasn't. The fact that Daniel wasn't where he would naturally have been had it not been for the sins of his fathers and the captivity that they caused. He could have sat in the corner and decided that life dealt him a bad hand, and therefore he would pout and be sour. His heart would have made him unusable to God if that were the case. Let me ask you something. Is that what you are doing? Have you felt the card hand God dealt you was somehow lacking? And because of that, you exempt yourself from looking at life in a positive way. Daniel distinguished himself in a bad place, surrounded by bad people. His marks of distinction brought out their jealousy. What Daniel remembered in life is an important lesson for all of us. Any test we face is more complicated than we may be led to believe. When we face challenges, they are not simply the test before him, but the test of what was inside of us. what his walk with God in life truly was. Many people seem to forget that external ch challenges have been approved by God to help us evaluate how true our walk is before him. Daniel chose character over comfort. He chose pushing himself instead of complaining about what he didn't have. Number two, Daniel chose discipline over disorder. He did what he should do and refused to do what he shouldn't do. As much as I appreciate Daniel, this virtual discipline isn't really my strong suit. Yet, I know in aspects of life, from school to work, from family to marriage, from health to hobbies,
from friendship to discipleship, all takes discipline. And God delights in discipline too. Look at what those political spies found when they dug into Daniel's private life. They saw nothing. They only see trustworthy, no corruption, no negligence. One of the things Daniel needed to bear in mind as he faced the simple tests of day-to-day uh, -day living is that, yeah, someone is always watching. Another lesson equal to that one helped him get a positive attitude about life. Challenges give me a platform to show my love and devotion to the Lord. They come into my life through the stamp of God's approval because they help test me so that God can show me where I'm lacking in my preparations for his use. Daniel chose to respond to life with discipline and try to figure out how to best use his circumstances to honor God. When we do that, we will just find some of the challenges, tasks, would open the doors to great opportunities. It takes discipline to shut off the emotional flow and became productive in spite of the temptation to wallow in self-pity and moan injustice. Emotional discipline is essential to godliness. Number three, Daniel chose peace over panic. He knew his life was always preserved by God until the Lord was finished with him. It's clear Daniel's choice wasn't compulsion or duty. It was trust. He trusted God to do what God wanted done. That's the essence of a surrendered life. He held his head high and knew the truth. We are invincible until God says our life has completed its mission. Trusting a God we cannot see is not easy. When facing pain, we can feel, and judgment we will discern. At the same time, if our faith means anything at all, it means the ability to be courageous with trust in the hands of a God who is limitless in power. Daniel was courageous to stand for what was right simply because it was right. He was courageous to stand for the Lord regardless of the circumstances. Daniel was courageous to remain faithful whatever the cost. And for Daniel, the cost could be very high. The church would be a vastly different place today if church members had the some, same kind of commitment to the things of God that Daniel had. We allow everything in the world to come between us and our faithfulness to the Lord. Many Christians, myself included, do not pray like they should. They do not read their Bibles. They do not witness. 
Many are willing to sacrifice their testimonies and their commitment to the Lord on the altar of convenience, pleasure, and worldly ambition. Fact is, we give up and we give in far too easy. Daniel chose character over comfort. He chose discipline over disorder. He chose peace in the face of trouble over panic. He chose rest over revenge. For Daniel and for us alike, is all the life choices rather than life circumstances that matter and define who we are as God's children. Life can be hard, but God is not hard-hearted. He loves you and he knows you. If you know him, and if you have made a choice to follow him through the conditions carefully prescribed in his word, you will find a courageous life. It's about listening to his will, taking the risk, and living out the choice. Amen.
Thank you, Lorna. Morning, everybody. So over the course of uh, these few weeks, we've had members of the congregation come up and just share a testimony um, about where they've seen God at work uh, in their lives. Today, I'd like to welcome Pervana Rostami and uh, Yalda Dabiran. Uh, we'll translate for her. Pervana is from Iran, and she just wanted to share uh, a little bit of her testimony with everybody today. So thank you very much, and here's Pervana. Peace of God be with you. از خداوند تشکر می کنم I thank the Lord که اجازه داده من امروز بتونم شهادتی باشم برای خداوند I thank the Lord that he gave me this opportunity to be able to share my testimony about his faithfulness with you من معجزات او and his miracles و از حضور شما خوشحالم که این وقت رو به من دادین که بتونم این شهادت رو بدم. I'm happy to be here with you all to be able to share this testimony with you. خواهرم مریم My sister Maryam که الان در این دنیا وجود نداره چهل و سه روز چهل و چهار روز رفت پرکشید به طرف خداوند. Uh, my sister Maryam who passed away about 40 days ago خواهر من بود she was my sister. و من در ایران ایمان آورد برد من برای ایمان my sister took me to, to uh, believe in Jesus in Iran و بله در کلیسایی در خیابان کاج there was a church in Kaj street in Iran من اون زمان 23 ساله بودم I was 23 back then. و هنوز حس که خداوند لمس کنه قلبمو نبود ولی ایمانم آورده بودم. I didn't feel that the Lord touched my heart at the moment but I accepted him. در 14 سال گذشته in the last 14 years در گرجستان in Georgia in the country of Georgia همسرم ایست قلبی کرد ما پناهنده بودیم اونجا و من خیلی تنها بودم و هیچ زبانی بلد نبودم به جز فارسی و خیلی قلبم شکسته شده بود و خداوند رو واقعا اونجا حس کردم تو که قلبم خداوند حضور داشت برای من و از اون زمان تا همین حالا که اینجا ایستادم خداوند خداوند همش توی زندگی من داره کار میکنه و سپاس گذارم از خداوند and I'm thankful to the Lord for it. من خیلی خوشحالم برای خدا من خیلی خوشحالم که توی قلب من هست و دوست دارم فقط برای خداوند تا زمانی که زنده هستم حرکت بکنم I'm so happy to have the Lord in my heart and until I'm alive I want to live for him and do, do things for him بس خدا من برای تمام اعضای این کلیسا برای چت میخوام و معجزاتشون میخوام که همیشه بوده و هست و خواهد بود تشکر میکنم از همه گی Thank you very much, Parvana. I think I can speak for everyone in saying that we're all touched by your testimony. So thank you very much. Let us pray. Lord God of heaven and earth, with gladness we praise you. For you create all things, 
and sustain all things. For making us in your image to love one another and to care for your creation, we give you thanks. For the gift of your Son, who redeems and guides us according to your will, baptizing us through the church to be your people in the world, we give you thanks. By your Spirit, empower us to show your love to others, even as we pray for the church and those who lead in it, the world that we may learn to reverence and care for it, those who rule in the nations, those who serve as teachers, healers, and caregivers, the poor, the homeless, the hungry, those who mourn and are alone, those imprisoned for defending truth or justice, the powerless and the oppressed in all nations, those who are persecuted in the service of Christ, and all who need our ministries as your servants. God eternal, keep us in communion with your saints of all time that we may worthily serve you as people of your everlasting covenant until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. For to you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, we offer all praise and honor. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ, as we make life choices, let them be guided by character, discipline, and peace. Remember, it is the choices we make, not the circumstances we face, that define us as children of God. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you.